Hey everybody, welcome to more One More Round. I'm super excited today. We are actually at the Tuft & Needles headquarters and I've got my good friend Jen Spiller, which she's gonna come on in a little bit. She's accountant executive, um, but I also have the head of sleep experience, JD Valilla. And uh, you know, I'm excited because we're gonna chop it up. I, I got a chance to see a little bit of preview yesterday. JD was doing a Q&A with uh, Jen and there's so many things about sleep that are important for people to know. Uh, but for me, I, I thought about it like it's a third of your life. Why wouldn't we all want to get better sleep? So, uh, Jay, I'm going to pass it to you real quick and give a little background on yourself because it's pretty fascinating having a title like that. Yeah, so, um, well, thank you for inviting me on. Um, first thing I would say is uh, I'm definitely not a mattress guy. My background is actually electronics um, and project management, product development. So I started uh, at the company in 2016, uh, and really it was around designing um, smart mattresses or sensors that can track your sleep. So the whole idea of like wearables, but built into the mattress. Yeah, like an AI, like for the mattresses right. and stuff? Right, right. And cool. so really the premise was is that, you know, you said it earlier, you spend a third of your life in sleep, uh, asleep. So if you think about that in terms of years, that's like for a lot of us, that's, you know, average lifespan, that's 27 years of your life. Yeah. Um, so how can we with you in that position where you're in this state, how can we track and understand um, you know, specifically your sleep needs throughout the course of the night? And then what can we do around automating that experience? Because mm -hmm. um, sleep is a very active state. So you know, it stands to reason then that your mattress and that environment should also be active as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I started with that and really I came in with no experience. I knew nothing about mattresses. I knew nothing about sleep. And through the course of that, just trying to understand more, I read every book I could get my hands on, clinical studies, watched every video, met with sleep scientists, um, developed relationships like that. And the more I learned, it was like, oh, I should try this. Yeah. And the more I tried something, the more I realized like, whoa, I don't get sick anymore. My weight doesn't fluctuate. I perform, you know, it's almost like you're even keel, you're in balance every day. And it was and very you're predictable. Quite an athlete too, right? So yeah. you've ran marathons and, and uh, Ironman, that kind of thing. I'm a, so I'm a triathlete, but uh, I just do it for fun. I okay. don't really. I do a couple competitions here and there, but it's really more. It's just kind of a way of living. So how was it? Uh, how did it affect that part of your life? So that was actually where I learned how to kind of fine tune and hack my my sleep schedule because what. You know, if you look at like the standard recommendation for sleep, it's like, you know, average adult seven and a half to eight hours or the bell curve of like six to nine hours, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's like a very general thing of like, if you need to sleep seven and a half hours, that's great. But if you're an athlete, um, you need to sleep more because you're putting your body through more strain. So, you know, what I, what I started to do was ditch the wearables and actually just listen to my body. So I would go to bed at the same time um, every night, but on a day that I worked out hard, I would let myself sleep as long as I could to see what my body needed. And that's where I started to realize like on days that I work out, I actually need eight hours or eight and a half hours. What were those triggers? What were the things you're looking for that let you know that you got better sleep? Was it just like less brain fog? Was it your body just feeling better? Or what were those things It was more perception-based. Perception? perception. Uh, there, there's a little bit of, you have to be careful with trackers. Because mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, like they provide a lot of great data, but really you should be relying on your own perception. Because you know what, what's going to make more sense to you? If you wake up in the morning and you feel great, uh, and your tracker says you didn't sleep well, who do you trust? Your perception or the tracker? And so I was trying to experiment with that mindset of like, how do I remove the technology, um, do everything that I normally do, my sleep routine, my wind down routine, all of these things, mm -hmm. um, but just let my body kind of teach me what I need to know. And then from there, I just bookended that. And now I know on days that I work out, eight to eight and a half hours is ideal for me. So. You know, going back to the AI portion of a mattress, like what what does it do? Is it like is it temperature based? Is it like softness, or how does it help you sleep better? So what you're trying to do, first of all, if you're it, there's no one size fits all when it comes to a mattress. So when mm -hmm. we go out and shop for a mattress, where you know a lot of the times it's feels that you're looking for. Um, the idea behind the concept behind having a smart mattress would be. Um, you don't really need to choose. The bed should have some level of adjustability. Mm -hmm. um, if it can have some level of thermal management, active thermal management, um, that's ideal because really, you know, throughout the course of the night, some of us sleep cold, some of us sleep hot. What we're trying to achieve is thermal neutrality where we sleep kind of in the Goldilocks zone. So how do we create technologies that can monitor you, monitor your environment, and then take action accordingly? 
and really to maximize your comfort. That's that's awesome. Yeah, because I yesterday you were talking about like your sleep routine, and you said it's like I'm. I don't know how you said it, but basically, I'm excessive at this. Like, yeah. But uh, I, I'd love you to kind of go through that again. Like, how do you prepare to sleep? Because it's a pretty amazing routine. Yeah. Yeah. So the word I used was, I'm a bit extra when extra, it comes okay. to this. Yep. Um, okay. So I, I break it down into two buckets. And really what the idea is, is that it's, it's part sleep experience and part uh, sleep routine. Um, so if we talk about the sleep routine, this is something that we all can do and we all probably do it right now. We just don't think about it as a routine. Um, so what I do is I go to bed every night at 9.30. I wake, I, or, uh, yeah, I go to bed every night at 9.30 and I start my sleep routine 90 minutes before, so at 8, a, at 8 p.m. Uh, and so the idea is, is that at 8 p.m. I go in, I do my shower, brush my teeth, do all of the things that I would normally do at the end of the night. But before I leave the bedroom, I make sure the overhead fan is on, and I actually do turn down service on my bed, so I pull the covers back. Um, what does that do? The idea there is that uh, circulating the air, and then also at the same time, there's a level of automation in my house. Um, the temperature drops. What I'm trying to do is cool the sheets off Got and it. cool the bedding off. What I want to do is get into a nice cold mattress. That's what I'm, I'm trying to do. Mm. Um, and that actually messes with your perception a little bit and helps you fall asleep faster. So before I exit the room, I've pulled the sheets back, I've turned the fan on. When uh, right around at the same time, the smart thermostats in the house are dropping. So they're dropping the temperature, depending on, you know, the ideal sleep temperature is like 66 to 68 degrees. We live in the desert. I don't even know that my house can achieve that <laughs> level of temperature. So I drop it to 71. Um, and so from 8 p.m. to 9.30, it's basically dropping the temperature in the house. It's cooling the whole house. It's cooling the bedroom. It's cooling the house. Um, the other thing that happens is my air purifier turns on um, and the smart lights in the house, they begin to dim out and fade out over the course of 45 minutes. So I'm removing light noise. I'm purifying the air. I'm dropping the temperature. Um, at 9.15, my white noise machine turns on. I can hear it from the living room, which is my signal that I've got 15 minutes before I need to head into the bedroom. Um, and so what happens is, is then I walk into the bedroom and it's already dialed in. It's 100% dialed into everything that I need. And it's like, it's like walking into this room that's just all yours, set up to go, jump into bed, boom, asleep. And what I like about that is like you're preparing yourself to sleep. Right. You're literally telling your mind by all of these things you're doing in the routine that, okay, it's time to shut down. So I'm sure you, you get to sleep quite a bit faster than you did before you were doing this, correct? Yes, 100%. But I will say... When you look at, um, I don't want everybody to think like I sleep perfectly because we're all human. So there are times where it's where I'm trying to go to bed and you know all of a sudden I have a bunch of thoughts that rush through my head or I'm thinking about a presentation mm. or I'm thinking about a podcast with you, right? Mm. Um, and so what, that's when you have to have enough tools at your disposal to actually take action to remove that that kind of anxious energy. Yeah. And so that's where there's other things beyond just your sleep routine. Um, and you know all these cool devices and automation. Um, there's a very human side of it that you still need to address, and stress is a huge part of that. You know, I love what you said yesterday. Like when your mind's racing, and you know you have these thoughts. Your answer to the question was write it down. Yep. And it's so funny because I always do that, and I do it on my phone. Like I'll just put it on my phone, and I open up my notes, and I throw some things because a lot of times it's like a to-do list or you know a thought that I randomly had I don't want to forget about. But when you do that. It's there, and it can be out of your brain. And I think that was a cool little life hack. Yep. Uh, another thing, let's talk about thread count, because this, <laughs> this is fascinating. My partner Eric's over here. He's laughing. But uh, I always thought that you wanted a high thread count because they're more expensive. But for sleep, you don't. Why is that? So if you think about, you know, we look at the Tuft & Needle mattresses, they're designed to promote cooling. Mm -hmm. They're really designed for airflow. What we're trying to do is get body heat and humidity away from your body. Um, and one way to do, to do that is by moving air. So if you buy a high thread count set of sheets, basically more threads, the tighter the weave. And so the less air can pass through. I mean, air is still passing through, but not as easy as, say, 400 thread count. Um, if you look at our newest sheets, which are the hemp sheets, those are 115 thread count. Are they very, comfortable? Very, very breathable. Oh, yeah. Super okay. soft. Like, if you like linen, hemp is, like, hemp is the next level up. All right. So I, I got to do that. In fact, I'm going to go throw my sheets away when I get home. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was telling that to my wife. She's like, that can't be true. I'm like, it's true. Yeah. 
it's the the head sleep guy said yep. it. So um, now, like, there's some apps out there. How popular? We were talking about the Calm one, which I had mentioned that I had, I had uh, downloaded when I was yeah, couldn't sleep and couldn't breathe, and I was having a heart failure. And and it was it was pretty soothing. Like, do you recommend those types of things? And oh yeah. W- what are they good for? Um, again, it's more of like a toolbox at your disposal. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether it's Calm or Headspace or any any app that you find that you feel. Um, has the tools in it to help you relax or mm-hmm. to take your mind off of things. It's fair game. Um, and I wouldn't recommend one in particular. I would say try a bunch of them and just kind of get a feel for which one you like. Um, the benefit to those is like, so again, thinking about a night where, um, you know, I'm just a little bit stressed. I've got some thoughts in my head. Uh, I've already written them down, but that's not enough. It's so nice to be able to just grab my phone, turn on the Calm app, put a sleep story on, and like hear somebody tell me a story, and boom. It's a distraction. It yeah. helps me fall asleep. You could do the same with meditation or breath work before bedtime as well. Yeah. In fact, uh, next week I'm having a breath work guy on and I'm, I'm excited because this happened right before. So I'm going to talk to him a little bit about that sleep and I'm doing a live breath work session while, you know, I'm on air. So that should be pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, let's talk about booze. Booze and sleeping, is it is it good for you? I know a lot of people have this perception like a couple of glass of red wine or, you know, whatever they drink can help with sleep. Is that true? Oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna fall asleep pretty quick. That first part of the night, you're gonna sleep really well. Mm. Second part of the night, absolutely not. You got a lot of head nods over here. Yeah, and that's not gonna happen. Yeah. So I think it, it comes down to really like two things. First, and, and I, I just say this with caution for, for everybody, um, you shouldn't be using any type of substance or supplement to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. If you require something like that, you're not addressing the underlying issue, okay? right? Like we should be able to fall asleep really naturally. I mean, yeah. it's built into who we are. Um, so supplements or anything like that, something is likely off. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would address that from more of a behavioral standpoint and kind of habits and just ob- observing yourself. Um, but when it comes to alcohol, what happens is, and you can see this in your tracker, um, you know, after about two glasses, what'll end up happening is you'll go to sleep And the first part of your night, you're going to get some pretty solid deep sleep. Uh, But the second part of the night, it gets real choppy. Mm -hmm. And what's basically happening is you're in a high arousal state um, and your body just can't settle in. So you may feel hot and cold. You know, your temperature is off. You may be kicking a leg out from underneath the sheets. Um, Any type of noise may wake you. And so it puts you into this state where you're super sensitive. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, you have to really think about on the nights that you're going to drink, um, you know, just make sure that you don't need to perform the next day. Cause if you really have to perform, you're probably putting yourself uh, not going to be optimal. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to be optimal yeah. at all. Now, uh, my boy Danny yesterday was asking for a friend about uh, THC. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, same thing. You know, you shouldn't be using any type of substance to fall asleep. Um, but what I would say with THC and even CBD is like now that it's becoming more mainstream and even legalized in certain states, you're going to see a lot more studies around it. And there's not a lot of research out there just yet. Mm-hmm. But either way, I, I don't know of any sleep scientist that's going to recommend you take some sort of substance for sleep. Yeah. Um, unless you're under some, un, unless you're under like medical supervision, mm-hmm. I highly doubt any sleep scientist is going to recommend that. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. And it's funny because you had also answered a question. Uh, it was my question. I was asking about supplementation. And, you know, you, you didn't say that any supplement specifically, but you were talking about electrolytes. electrolytes. What, what, what do the electrolytes do and how, how do they help? I mean, so if you think about when you fall asleep at night, um, so we sweat throughout the night. We're sweating right now. It's mm-hmm. just in the form of vapor. But when we sweat in the mattress, it does pool up. So you're, you're sweating. Your body is very active. Your brain is active. So you're burning energy throughout the course of the evening. Um, so electrolytes, it's just a way of, you know, replenishing electrolytes before you go to bed. So loading up on electrolytes mm-hmm. so that for those eight hours that you're sleeping, um, you're just kind of already in balance. And then when you wake up, you replenish right away. It's no different than drinking a glass of water or, you know, b- before bed or, you w- or when you wake up. Um, it's just with water, it's just water. So just why not up it a little bit and put some electrolytes in it like magnesium, calcium, potassium, potassium yeah. you know, sodium and chloride. I mean, we need those things. So Makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to start adding adding that because I, I drink these. Have you seen the Gator Lights, not the Gatorades? Mm. But they're like chocked full of all of the, the electrolytes. Yeah. I'm going to start drinking one of those to bed and see if it uh, 
if I notice any difference. Yeah, um, and what I would say is it, if you do notice a difference um, and, and it becomes a routine for you, then mm -hmm. what I want you to do is actually start exploring electrolytes that don't have natural flavors or anything like that, like natural flavors, sweeteners. It should really just be like very basic. These are the, the supplements that are in it, like yeah. no sugars, no preservatives, nothing like that. Well, so what's like a, an example, like a Pedialyte or something? Um, Pedialyte, I think, is probably one of the better ones, but if you look at the, like, read the ingredients, you'll mm -hmm. see, it'll say, like, magnesium, this, this, and then there's natural flavors others, yeah. or something. Um, the one I use is called Light Show, Light Show. Um, but I also use that as a triathlete, so the beauty of that is that it's concentrated, um, and it comes in a little, you have a little flask mm -hmm. that it comes with. Um, and so I can take that with me in my kit as I'm cycling. It's easy for me to just squirt it into a bottle and replenish, basically. Awesome. So it's just more convenient for me. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, so we are at Tuft & Needle, so we have to talk about Tuft & Needle a little bit. Uh, you said everybody is different in, like, the types of mattresses. Like, what do you mean? What, what are some differences people would have in what they're looking for in mattresses? Yeah. And then what are some of Tuft & Needle products that people should check out? So we're different. I'll, I'll just say it this way. When it comes to our sleep needs, our sleep needs are as unique as our personalities. Mm. Um, when it comes to like mattresses in particular, a lot of the times it's do I like plush? Do I like firm? Do I like medium? Um, and so the first thing you'll see with our line is that basically our line is, is uh, medium firm and up. Um, what we find is most people are comfortable kind of on the medium mattress. We call it medium firm, luxury firm, um, but it's, it's just kind of the middle of the road, not too soft, not too hard. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where most people start is like, you know, what's the feel? And that's very perception based. Uh, outside of that, you know, if you think about what I try to encourage people to think about is that the mattress is not just a mattress by itself, like it's a whole system. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like the mattress which I know to be very breathable because of our adaptive foam. Let's top that with the most breathable sheets. That's why, I, like I said, the hemp or linen or even the percale sheets. Um, they have kale sheets? Percale. Oh, percale. Yeah, percale, oh, so it's like, like cotton. Yeah. You can eat your sheets? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so think about it more as a system. And, and one thing I would, I would always recommend too is when you change your sleep surface, mm -hmm. more than likely you need to change your pillows. Um, because of just the way we lay on the mattress and if you change the sleep surface, it could alter um, you know, the placement of your head based on the pillow. Okay. Um, so always look at pillows too whenever you change a mattress. Uh, outside of that though, uh, one thing I would just recommend to everybody is throughout the course of the night, like if you wake in the middle of the night and, um, you know, something like try to make a mental note of what disturbed you. Was it noise? If it was noise, you know, we sell a white noise machine that's really, really amazing. It's my favorite product that we have here. Um, so you, you use a white noise machine that actually creates kind of a, a sound blanket in the room that blocks out anything that would normally wake you. Um, you could use like, we have lavender pillow sprays. So if you're into lavender or, or essential oils to help you fall asleep, not everybody really likes um, scents, um, but it definitely works. Um, so I would say, you know, great mattress, great pillows, uh, you know, obviously top that with a, with a, with per, my personal favorite is the hemp sheets. Uh, and then anything you can do to alter the environment, so white noise, uh, lavender pillow sprays. And then outside of that, I mean, thinking through, you know, we have amazing furniture that's all handmade or, hand, you know, like high quality hand, um, uh, well, it's not handmade, it's, uh, it's just high quality like wood products that were designed okay. yeah, in house. Yeah, it's not like particle board. Yeah, it's not going to yeah. be, yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think the idea was not just come in and buy this mattress, but you can buy kind of the whole experience. Mm -hmm. You've got the nightstands, you've got the bed frame. Um, yeah. I, I liked when you were talking about uh, when you wake up, you have like a, a light machine, like you wake up to light. Like what, what does that do? Is it just like trigger your brain to say, hey, you know, it's time to wake up because like that's how we're built and the sun should be doing that or? What do yeah, you... so it's called a sunrise alarm clock. Mm -hmm. We don't actually sell one here. There's other great companies that offer them. Um, I only use it during the winter time. So um, my house, I live in Tucson, and basically where my house faces, it faces east, it faces the sunrise. So I'm able to sleep with the blinds open. So during the summer, when that sun comes up at 5.30, I just wake up with the sun. Mm -hmm. I, I use light, so no alarm needed whatsoever, just light. During the winter, though, now the sun is rising 7 a.m., um, so now I need something else to wake me up, and I don't want it to be an alarm, you know, like any type of alarm on the phone, I want it to be something kind of natural. And so 
using a sunrise alarm clock is a great tool. And typically what it is, uh, a lot of them are like kind of three alarms in one. So your, your kind of, uh, your final alarm, like all else fails, this thing is gonna beep, it's gonna wake you up, right? But what you can do with a lot of them is 30 minutes before the time you're supposed to get up, mm -hmm it'll actually start emitting light. It'll start fading on. And then maybe 15 minutes before your alarm, it'll start playing some sort of music. And so the idea is, is like, we need to wake up slow. The, you know, the slower you wake up, you know, it's just better for your body as opposed to like, er, 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 and all of a sudden you're jump-starting your system. Right. And then on top of that, if you think about sunrise, sunrise is about light, it's about heat. Mm -hmm. So during the winter, you can program your thermostats so that they actually start heating the house before you wake up, like 90 minutes before. Start warming your house. So now you've got heat, you've got light, you've got light sound, and hopefully you're waking up nice and softly. You know, just nice, smooth, easy, coming out of sleep. Yeah, well, and earlier, so you were talking about uh, waking up, or going to bed at 9.30, and then I think your wake-up time is 5.30. Yeah. And you were, to, yesterday you were talking about the scheduling and how that's super important. Like why is it important? Is it because your body starts to adapt and it gets better sleep because of that? Yeah, 100%. So it's really around this idea of the more you, you schedule your sleep, the more regularity and consistency you have, the more your body can actually adapt to your needs. Mm -hmm. And so if, it, if, if you, know, you already train yourself to go to bed at 9.30, then your body already knows like, hey, I need to start releasing all these hormones and you know, all, of these, all of these biological processes mm -hmm. that drive sleep are just more in tune to, to who you are. The more erratic you are, the harder it is for your body to just kind of adjust. Like at the end of the day, our bodies are always seeking balance. And so by having regularity, that just provides a level of balance that now that your body can do its job. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. And then you, you said if you, it was one or the other on a night that you couldn't completely be in the routine, it was the wake up time, correct? Yeah. And that, it, why is it the, the wake up time you think is the most important? Um, a lot of it is because uh, if you wake up at the same time and you have the right tools you know, available to you, you can recover doing other things. Like, so, you know, if you go to bed at 11 o'clock at night and you lose two hours of sleep, let's say, and you wake up at 5.30, um, yeah, you lost those two hours of sleep, but you got up at the same time. You got up on your same schedule, and more than likely, you can take time to actually recover during the day. So 15 minutes in the sun, you know, a 20-minute nap, things like that. Um, but I try to, I find a lot of times that most people deviate from their bedtime. Um, so instead of locking them into a bedtime, just, just get up at the same time and then prioritize whatever recovery you can do during the day and then go to bed that, that next night at, at the proper time. Okay. It's that just make, an easier process. Make, it makes a lot of sense. And, and you just mentioned naps. Like, what are your thoughts on naps? Oh, I love naps. I, I do too. And after you were, share a little bit of why naps are good and what it does. Because after your talk yesterday, I'm like, I am napping. I, yeah. I'm going to make it mandatory. Yeah. So, uh, no, I love naps. And I think um, it's kind of unfortunate that as adults, we don't think about it. Like, um, you know, as kids, I mean, come on, kids are napping. Yeah. Um, and it's a great tool if you think about it. So um, what I like about them. So first, I, I think you, you have to kind of not all naps are created equal. So some people will take a nap and it's like, oh, I took a nap for two hours. Okay, if you go beyond like 30 minutes, um, what ends up happening is you're stealing from your sleep that night. So really a nap should be max, like max, max, max is 30 minutes. Really, it should be around 15 to 20. Okay. Um, and so what happens though is that by taking a nap, um, you know, we have this molecule that builds up in our system throughout the day. It's called adenosine. And that's, that's what gives us that sleepy feeling or that tired feeling. Like you feel that pressure in your head, mm -hmm. that's adenosine. Um, and so that pressure is needed for us to fall asleep at night. So if you sleep too long, if you take like a two hour nap, you burn off, you could potentially burn off too much of it, um, which would take away from your ability to fall asleep that night. Mm -hmm. But if you just take a 20 minute or 30 minute nap, you'll burn off just enough of it to when you come out of it, you'll feel alert, right? And so that's where coffee is very different. So mm -hmm. most people think, oh, I drink coffee, I'm gonna feel more alert. Well, you're gonna feel more alert because what's happening is the caffeine molecule is binding to the adenosine receptor in your brain. It's blocking the adenosine, and so you feel alert right away. But then once that. the caffeine wears off, all that adenosine kept building, now you get hit with a crash because all of it hits you at once. The adenosine kicks back in and now you're like, then there's your coffee crash. So 
Um, so yeah, you shouldn't really use coffee in that sense. It's better to use a nap or um, there's a term out there. I've heard multiple terms for this. My favorite is the nappuccino, where what you do is you actually drink your coffee um, and then you lay down for a 30 minute nap. Hmm. And you're not even gonna hit 30 minutes because by the time the caffeine kicks in, you're gonna wake up anyway. Yeah. Um, so you get the benefit of drinking your coffee. Your coffee, you get um, the nap in there, you burn off some adenosine, even if you block some of it with the caffeine. It's kind of like a win-win across the board. Nappuccino. Nappuccino. I, I, that's, that's a There's other one. terms. I just like that one. I think that's the funniest one. Well, this is this is amazing. I'm gonna um, cut for a minute, and I'm gonna have Jen come on and talk a little bit about her role and what she does. But um, anything else that you know the audience should know about sleep, or you know anything you want to you know put out there? I would just I you know I think there's probably two things I would say. Um, the first is around if you have like a snoring partner. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the times um, we have snoring partners and we don't think anything of it. Um, and really like snoring, sleep apnea, um, what I want people to like, you shouldn't be stigmatized by going to get a sleep study. Um, like especially if you're snoring or if you think you have sleep apnea, like go get a sleep study. It's actually really fascinating. I think we should all, you know, go get a sleep study from time to time. So I would just encourage people like don't feel stigmatized by that. Um, cause it is, it is a, it is a sleep disorder that could be quite dangerous. Um, and then the second part I would just say is a lot of the times while there are sleep disorders out there, the vast majority of us, um, our, our sleep troubles are basically based on our behaviors. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, to frame that in a positive light, I promise you your sleep is well within your control. Um, it's just a matter of just like finding the right education sources, you know, like actually accredited places not like tiktok and things like that like do your research not everything on tiktok's true yeah i mean yeah so do your research there's a lot of information out there um and so it's just again do your research your sleep is probably more within your control than you think beautiful well i really appreciate your time today this was great i know i know you guys got a ton out of this so make sure you share it i'm going to bring jen on in just a minute uh, so she can talk a little bit about how you can get uh, tough needle products and at, at a pretty darn good discount so uh, thank you, JD. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Welcome back, everybody. I wanted to make sure that I brought Jen Spiller on so she can talk a little bit about her role at Tough to Needle and how you can get the products. So, Jen, tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, how people can pick up some products. So, first of all, thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and uh, so, I've kind of thought about how I explain to people what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, my job title is ex account executive and inside sales. However, I think of myself more as somebody who helps people get a great night's sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and how I do that is we have a friends and family discount that we have internally. Um, it's a very, very significant discount. Um, and so my role is to work with individuals, work with companies, um, even in the real estate arena where I is my background, mm -hmm. things like that, and to pass that discount, that deep discount on to those employers, those individuals for their clients, their employees, and so forth. Um, what I love about it is I'm not asking for anything in return. It's legitimately and wholeheartedly um, something that we think is very important here. Mm -hmm. um, and we think that sleep and wellness is extremely important and we want to just offer that benefit to everybody that has that sleeps yeah i, I love it because <laughs> when you were explaining the program and i know we're working on some like email marketing for for companies uh it's it's great because like it can be a solopreneur it could be you know a realtor it could be amex you know a gigantic company but it's a benefit that they can offer their employees uh that doesn't cost them anything and at the end of the day again we spend a third of our life asleep why wouldn't we want to sleep on a great mattress and that was the problem i think with the mattress industry for a long time it was just so freaking expensive for some of the really nice ones but you guys have amazing products and i mean they're significantly lower and with the discount so how would they reach out to you to get the discount and a code um and to add on to that as well mm -hmm. um and and just to kind of say on what you were talking about how it is expensive mm -hmm. um and it is but is also very important um and it's ju not just mattresses um we have a whole line of wellness as well um but we do offer um payment plans um there is financing um such as a firm and shop pay and things like that so people that think that they can't afford to have 
you know, a great night's sleep, they also can do that. So I think that's very important for people to know because sometimes it is such a big purchase. But again, like you said, you, you're in bed a third of your life. I am proof in the put, proof is in the pudding. I have the products. I sleep well. I love my products. I love getting into my bed every, every night. I'm like, yay, get to go to sleep. Um, so for me, it's really exciting. Um, the best way they can get a hold of me is um, either to call me directly or email me um, if they know anybody that has an HR person or a benefits person or anybody that could, you know, that they know that they might not be able to, but somebody that they know that could benefit mm -hmm. from this, I would love to talk to them and tell them what we can offer. Awesome. Well, yeah, definitely reach out to, to Jen. Um, we'll put uh, her information below so you can do that. But just to tell a story from my standpoint of how great Tough the Needle is as a company. Uh, so we, we've always donated to Casa Academy and handled their website and done some marketing for, for years. And they always have this annual event. Well, five years ago, they had their first one. And Tough the Needle was a brand new company at this point in time. And they had donated, it was, I think it was, three thousand dollars in it and like that was like one of the things you could put your ticket in and win and as most of my friends know i'm just i'm lucky on these <laughs> things that i so i won and i'm thinking oh cool i'm gonna win a mattress i won one mattress it ended up being well first it was five mattresses and because i called the the rep and she's like oh no you can pick five mattresses i'm like what cool so i got myself one i got my dad one i got my mom one i got uh uh, my partner Rick at the time, and then I had, who did I give the other one to? Oh, and then we put one in our guest bedroom. Mm -hmm. So my dad asked for a cow king. Well, he actually needed a king. So it gets delivered to his house. Oh, this isn't right. You know, can they take it back? You know, I, I says, I can figure it out. I said, well, let me just call and see what they want to do. So I call him and they said, oh, well, no problem. Just keep it. We'll send you another one. So he sent me another one. I gave that to my friend Billy and I'm like, what a cool company, you know, and that's that's kind of the, the heart of like who they are. So the fact that they care so much about people and, and helping them with, you know, something that's super important for all of us, which is sleep, is neat. So, um, yeah. yeah, I appreciate uh, you setting all this up. This is exciting. Guys, make sure to reach out to, to Tough Needle. I sleep on one myself. I love it. I'm probably going to be getting a new one here soon. Um, but uh, appreciate it. Make sure to share this out. Everybody needs to hear this. So we will see you next time.